Hey, it's Mike here, and today my response to Dr. Joel Furman's observation that in the past some older plant-based figures have had some mental decline, which he says could be due to a lack of long-chain omega-3s like EPA and DHA. And the majority of them developed neurologic problems in later life. Now, people ask me to respond to this because it sounds scary and it's like, is a vegan diet totally flawed and is everyone gonna get dementia? Well, I should say that Dr. Furman was mentioning that after escaping heart disease and cancer and living a long life, this is what happened to some people. Now, perhaps they made it further than they otherwise would have with their overall healthier diets. And Dr. Furman is a plant-based doctor. And so we're gonna look at a bunch of studies, including ones that I haven't looked at, investigate this, investigate the omega index, how effective it is, how much DHA is making it into the brain or not, conversion from ALA, that plant-based omega-3 to EPA and DHA, a newer review on on that and we'll cover Dr. Furman saying he's been attacked by vegans for you know even bringing this up and challenging that idea and supporting long chain omega supplementation. You you know I've faced opposition and attacks. So yeah, we'll get to Dr. Furman's main quote here saying that it's not just you know cognitive decline in terms of dementia, but also possibly Parkinson's that could be connected here. Here he is. Most of these people who are my own personal mentors who I loved and thought you know were great great people. I'm younger, they're older. And I became a medical doctor and they lived longer and eventually passed away. And these people like Dr. Shelton, Dr. Vetrano, Dr. Sidwa, Dr. Burton, Dr. You know, Joy Gross, these individuals either became, most of them became demented in later life. They mostly developed dementia or they developed Parkinson's disease. And wow. they were on plant-based yeah. diets, eating super healthfully. And the majority of them developed neurologic problems in later life. They didn't get cancer, they didn't have heart attacks, they didn't have foot amputations and kidney failure from diabetes, but they did get neurologic deficits. Now, I'm not super familiar with these plant-based figures and exactly what diet they ate and when, so these are from years back. And this is, of course, just his anecdotal observation. We'll talk about rates in vegetarians, people that don't eat fish, in a little bit. But it's also the case, I have to say right up front, that he does sell supplements. But then, to defend him, he says he only started selling those supplements because all the ones in the market went rancid really easily and he wanted to you know, change that production process. Utilizing it with my patients and family many, many years ago, it would taste rancid like gasoline. Then I started to invest in how to have my own brand made so we could have it refrigerated in glass bottles and sent to us in refrigerated trucks. But yeah, let's get this whole getting attacked by the vegan community thing out of the way. Here he is. You, you know, I've faced opposition and attacks on this against because there are some people that see a plant-based and vegan eating as such with such religious fervor that they see any kind of thing that's that's discussing maybe a, a weakness of a vegan diet as an attack against them and their philosophy. This is hard because from one angle, I can see why vegans would be like, hey, don't scare people away from a healthier diet. I think the nuances here don't do that. But then of course, we should be exploring all of these potential weak points of a vegan diet and improve them. It's also been a frustrating avenue for vegans because we've seen people quit over just hunches that they weren't getting enough long chain omegas without getting any tests or anything like that. Like Nikocado Avocado just having some brain fog and being like, I'm quitting because I need long chain omegas, even though he could easily take an algae supplement and get those same exact omegas from the same place that fish do, algae. Miley Cyrus did as well, Ravana did as well, but clearly Joel Furman is saying, you can just take these. <laughs> Speaking to any vegan insecurity as well, I should just mention that 80% of the world does not hit the recommended target of 250 milligrams per day of EPA and DHA. And this situation is mirrored by people in the US with again, about 80% of them not getting that 250 mark. So this is not some unique vegan problem. And then of course, vegetarians are in the exact same boat, which is clearly not a fishing boat, not getting fish. Like they're not getting DHA from eggs or dairy. It's the same situation. Yet we see that vegetarians from studies like this have lower levels of dementia than meat eaters. So yeah, well, some people wanna turn it into a weak point of fishless diets. I think that it's really just a potential opportunity to 
move things above and beyond what they could be and be even healthier. And then I will say I haven't mentioned Parkinson's in this area. And yeah, it is the case from this 2024 review that there's quote, significant scientific evidence regarding the effects and mechanisms underlying the neuroprotective properties of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids in Parkinson's. However, I should say that Parkinson's disease and diet studies in the realm of plant-based diets have only shown positive results, lower rates for people eating highly plant-based. So you can start to see that things are a little bit of gray area, which is ironic because DHA is in the gray matter in your brain. It just wants to be that way. <laughs> and there's been more than a dozen studies and every study testing this documents that low omega-3 index is associated with brain shrinkage and cognitive impairment. Epidemiology is used to back this with omega index, but it could also be an index of socioeconomic status or healthy eating, you know, plant-based pescatarian style eating, eating less red meat as this non-vegan article stated. <laughs> but speaking of the whole brain thing, I was originally swayed into taking that 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA by Dr. Greger years back, highlighting a study saying that people given that supplement had less brain shrinkage over time. And here's that chart in particular. Yeah, it's like less than half of the brain shrinkage. And I had to look and see if there was any follow-up data on this. And I just found a study from around the same time on people with mild or moderate Alzheimer's, giving them two years of DHA and finding no decrease in brain shrinkage or improvement in cognitive function. And the DHA group actually trended losing slightly more though is statistically meaningless. Maybe it's how the condition of Alzheimer's blocks the benefit or something. I don't know, we need more and bigger studies, but we do have another study showing that these supplements decrease hippocampal brain shrinkage, a particular area as well as less loss in the cerebrum, main section of your brain here. So that's all interesting stuff. No completely definitive answer, but still showing potentially more benefits than downsides. And so in the vegan community about taking these supplements, we have two schools of thought, which you guessed it are yes or no. And we've seen even particular doctors like Dr. Clapper go back and forth on this, originally saying no conversion is enough. And he was concerned about some studies where higher intake could lead to increased prostate cancer risk. And just because studies taking excessive amounts of fish oil is, is negative, doesn't mean that allowing deficiencies is, is positive. But then after eating a bunch of ALA, the precursor to those longer chains that's plant-based, uh, he took his index and he still had a bad score. So he was like, no, I gotta start taking it. Most vegans, for example, that they're, who's omega-3, the majority of vegans and plant-based eaters have a deficiency of omega-3 fatty acids as represented by the omega-3 index. And these individuals who I checked as a physician at that point had exceedingly low omega-3 indexes. And this is where the critics come in and they say, hey, well, he got an index score. We're not completely sure that's a great indication of conversion within your body, especially when we're talking about brain levels. So Dr. Clapper was duped into taking these pointless supplements that are expensive, blah, blah, blah. Thankfully, they're becoming cheaper. Anyway, let's look into the index then. So the omega-3 index measures the EPA and DHA content of the walls of your red blood cells, your erythrocytes. And no, it's not taking brain samples. No one's scooping out brain matter here, I hope. This reflects longer term status, unlike a plasma level, which is going to reflect recent dietary intake. And it is a case that about 10 to 20% of the fat within the brain is DHA. And that's especially in your gray matter, as I mentioned earlier, and that is responsible for movement, memory, and even emotions. So you want it to be intact. And for most people, the conversion of from green vegetables and walnuts and flax seeds, those conversion enzymes to make EPA and DHA is very genetically determined. And some people can make more and some people make less. And with nutritional gymnastics, you can sometimes get yourself to make a little bit more, but mostly it's genetics that, that, that determines that. So it's not every person on a plant-based diet gets a low omega-3 index, but the majority of people do get a low omega-3 index. So the majority is placing their brain at risk. It's not really a risk if you're gonna die young like most Americans, because you're not gonna get demented before the age of 80, most people before the age of 80 anyway, when most Americans die. And if you're gonna to live to be over to 90, 95, 100, you're gonna put your brain at risk if you don't take care of your omega-3 index. And this is where we get to a large review on conversion, looking at various sources of ALA, that plant-based precursor, and the results are not looking good. Now, whether we're talking about people taking flaxseed oil or ahi oil or whatever as a supplement, 
Well, EPA did tend to rise, which is good. For DHA, the levels didn't go up and in some cases even went down, but I have to mention that this is also plasma level, not just index, which isn't as good of a marker. Dietitian Jack Norris of Vegan Health has a heavily detailed page on this topic and compiled study showing that red blood cell index for vegans looks much better than plasma, with EPA being essentially the same as omnivores, but DHA was about 28% lower, but the same as vegetarians. But they did do some weighting by weighting the percentage of total fatty acids. They say this obtains the most accurate picture of how blood levels of long chain fatty acids compare, but not a normal procedure. They recommend focusing on ALA or taking a DHA supplement. And also back to this chart, there's some more points. These are generally smaller, low quality studies. It could reflect people being told to stop eating fish to not mess with their omega consumption. They're also short term studies. They're not on vegans. And there's theories that your body needs some time where you're not intaking the long chain omegas in order to realize that it needs to start converting it. But yeah, an example of one of these studies, yeah, this study is used to attack low vegan conversion, but it just looked at a single ALA rich meal and measured for three weeks after absolutely no chance for adaptation. But yeah, maybe they needed more time to start converting. And yeah, this study showed that ALA conversion goes down when given EPA and DHA. This makes sense. But let's throw in a point for the index skeptics from University of Illinois in Chicago. There is scant evidence showing that these supplements actually increase DHA or EPA in the brain. Ouch. So the position of people who are skeptical of this is that the index is really just picking up dietary intake and it could just easily miss completely adequate internal conversion from ALA, especially to places like the brain. So we have to ask, do these index tests on blood cell levels reflect the levels in other tissues and to what degree. And so unfortunately we have a lot of rodent studies here. Sorry, little guys. The scientist stating that it's unclear whether omega-3 index adequately reflects omega-3 levels in tissues other than the heart. Apparently that's settled. They decided to go and measure it. And yeah, the GI or intestinal level of EPA was very highly correlated with those blood cell levels, but DHA was not as strongly, but still correlated. But let's go back and support the skeptics here with this journal Nature's scientific report study. They say the commonly used omega index is not suitable for the brain because of the involvement of a unique transporter at the blood brain barrier. Yeah, they say that transporter is specifically for the lysophosphatidylcholine form of DHA, mouthful, LPC, let's call it. And in other mouse studies, this is way more absorbed than normal DHA. And so it has promise for future supplements. However, this study is also saying, no, there's another marker that's better and that's BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. We're getting into the weeds a little bit, but the idea is when DHA is higher in the brain, you'll create more of this. And they found something that I was actually quite shocked by, that the brain omega-3 levels negatively correlated with the blood omega-3 index. What? But let's hop over to this study on humans, and you can take brain samples of people who are dead. This was an autopsy study, and they found something similar. No significant relationship between cerebral cortex levels of fatty acids like DHA and omega index? What? So at this point researching this, I started to go insane, and I thought, man, I should take some DHA for my brain, but then I was like, would it even help? There's so much conflicting data. And for a final mouse study, there's a mouse study that actually gave mice ALA, that plant-based precursor, and then measured levels in tissues. They say as they fed these rodents more ALA, the DHA levels in tissues did go up. However, the blood index, despite being associated with a huge amount of tissues, was not associated with brain levels. What? But in terms of those other tissues, they do say that the omega-3 blood index is a reliable marker even for endogenously converted from ALA long chain omega acids, just as it is with dietary intake. At this point, I know this is a lot of information, but let's move out of the rodent studies back to this Alzheimer's study that again found no decrease in brain shrinkage or improvement in cognition. Well, they did find that that pretty high dose of supplementation of EPA and DHA increased cerebral spinal fluid levels of those omegas by like 30 to 40 percent. So clearly something was crossing the blood brain barrier. They again didn't get actual brain content levels, but the idea is 
that it was getting to where it needed to be, clearly to some extent. But remember, despite that cerebrospinal fluid increase, these Alzheimer's patients saw no benefit. But from this massive review, maybe it isn't even about it getting directly to the brain because as it states, ingestion of omega-3 fatty acids increases learning, memory, cognitive well-being, and blood flow in the brain. For all we know, it's just the slight blood thinning properties of DHA that in certain populations increases that blood flow and increases nutrients to the brain and decreases shrinkage. Heck, aspirin is a blood thinner. And from this study, quote, a mild dose of aspirin promotes hippocampal neurogenesis and working memory in experimental aging mice. I know we're old, but I just never want to stop experimenting with new styles. And this review on human studies found lower dementia risk associated with taking aspirin, but randomized control trials couldn't back it up. Another gray area. And another pretty key point here is, yeah, brain degeneration and all that stuff is important, but we are seeing that the omega index in the blood does accurately reflect things like the heart, the gut, other tissues that people would be concerned about and would potentially see benefits on a vegan diet from raising their index for. So yeah, all these studies almost create more questions than answers. We're seeing, again, back to that review, not great conversion from even supplementation of ALA at way higher levels than people would likely be eating in their diet. But again, those are small, low quality, short studies. We basically need a bunch of vegan studies. At the very least, it would be awesome to have a long-term study that was of a decent size, where you have one group that just eats more ALA in their diet. They're just trying to focus on that, which is one recommendation. Another one that takes ALA supplements. And then we have another one that is straight up taking EPA and DHA, and then perhaps a control group, and then see over time what their brain volume is. Hopefully they're an older population. And then try to get any metric you can of levels and conversion, of course, get the index. Take cerebral spinal fluid samples. That's kind of intense, but maybe you could do that. And then there's probably some other conversion metrics metrics that you could take. So all this information ironically lands me essentially right back where I was in the beginning. And that is that it's just a good insurance policy to be taking these medium to lower doses. And they really are when we're talking about algae oil, because some of these studies are blasting people with 2000 milligrams, two grams of these omega-3s. And generally vegans are taking between like 250 and 500 per day. So again, we see these vegetarian and plant-based populations having lower levels of dementia and lower levels of Parkinson's from what we've seen so far. So it's not like saying this is some major flaw where you're gonna be worse off, but if it is a concern for you, of course you can get these omegas where the fish get them from algae. No, I think it's definitely speculation for Dr. Furman to say these various plant-based figures was definitely the omega-3s. He doesn't say definitely, but he's pointing to omega-3s as causing that. There could be a bunch of other factors that do it, like lead exposure as a boomer over your lifetime and things like that. We don't know for sure, but I do still agree with him that you know, it's probably a good idea to take this stuff. And low omega-3 index also increases the brain's susceptibility to damage from toxic chemicals that, that, that could promote Parkinson's disease. People might say, hey, you're biased around this too. And this is where I'll say well, recent months, I have been working with a supplement that does contain these long chain omegas. I have an affiliate code. I'm not even gonna put it in the description because that's how bad of a business person I am. No, because I would come to the same conclusion anyway. I came to this same conclusion long before ever working with them anyway. Yeah, hopefully all this information didn't just melt the DHA right out of your brain, the, the little DHA that is still in there after potentially eating a plant-based diet. I mean, but if there are any other lines of evidence that vegans should or shouldn't be taking these algae-based supplements to get the EPA and DHA, then let me know, link it down below. What's your argument? And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.